So everybody, as you can see on my face, I'm extremely excited to kind of show off what I have behind me, and it's exactly what it looks like. It is floating windows on an external monitor that is being fully powered by an iPhone 15 Pro Max. So without further ado, let me show you exactly what this is all about. All right, everybody, so let's get right into this. And before I do get started, I do want to mention this is in test flight with a target date of kind of mid to late October for actual the public release. So the developer is still working on some kinks, but the name of this application is called Infinite X2P. So I don't really know what the name comes from, but it does kind of give you that idea that there's infinite possibilities with this new USB-C port. And I am connected via USB-C 3.2 into a Caldigit hub, which is then kind of going to my actual BenQ monitor, which we'll kind of zoom out in a little bit. But what I like about this is that it gets you set up nicely. There's no kind of room for messing up or anything like that because it walks you through how to set up everything perfectly because this does require you to use a mouse and a keyboard to actually use this and use it correctly. So you're gonna to wanna to go through setup environment and it's gonna walk you through how to be able to get this mouse interface to work. As you can see, I have a mouse cursor right here, which works kind of like the mouse that we see on iPadOS right now, but it tells you how to do it. So you basically want to go into settings and make sure you have all these current settings set up. So if I kind of turn this over like this to walk you through it real quick, we'll go into settings. You're going to want to go through accessibility and that's what this is all going to be through. You're going to go into touch. You're going to make sure assistive touch is turned on. You're going to go down to where it says always show menu, make sure that's turned on. You're going to want to turn the trackpad sensitivity all the way down to turtle speed, which is zero. And then you're going to want to go into your devices and connect your mouse. And you connect your mouse the same way you connect any Bluetooth mouse. Just make sure you're in pairing mode. I'm using an Anywhere S2. And you can see that it works on the entire OS, which is kind of cool to see. So that's something that you should know. And you can actually use this accessibility feature in any way. This isn't kind of something that's only for Infinite X2P. You can use it with iOS at any point. And then you connect your Bluetooth keyboard the way you would normally connect a Bluetooth keyboard through the normal Bluetooth menu settings. In settings, let's go all the way back and you go into your settings and just connect it that way. So go into your Bluetooth and you can see that I am connected. But then once all that's set up, then we can go back into Infinite X2P and kind of make sure and go through this process and make sure that you are fully set up. Press this check mark right here. Say that we're connected to display. Check that we have a keyboard connected. And now let's zoom out and show you the actual interface. Okay, everybody, so we are zoomed out and we do have this BenQ monitor right here. And my setup is very simple. Like I mentioned, we have my 15 Pro Max, which is down here, connected via Thunderbolt and USB-C to my CalDigit hub, which is down there. And then that's actually connected via USB-C to my 32 inch BenQ monitor. And then once you are connected to your Bluetooth mouse, we're gonna go through these checks, make sure that you're able to connect to an external display, connect a keyboard, dismiss the process, and then you're going to want to go into the Infinite X2P. Now, again, this isn't test flight, so they aren't charging if you do get invited to the test flight. But once you do get started, you do actually have to pay to use external monitor support. So I believe it's 99 cents per month, $10 per year, or $15 for a lifetime purchase. I think it's totally worth it to, to support a developer, to kind of show everybody what the possibilities are now that iPhones have a USB-C and the fact that the A17 Pro is nearly as powerful as the original M1 chip, which again was amazing in its own right. So that's what the purchase is for. And then once you do purchase it, we go in here and then you're brought into kind of like the dashboard menu. You get this nice little animation. You can see that the cursor actually changes a little bit. It, it changes to an actual more traditional cursor or with the traditional looking cursor. Then you have a little bit of information. So enjoy Infinite X2P multitasking, use mouse or trackpad and keyboard, look up studio mode. So again, some nice little tools and we're gonna press continue and then voila, we have a full edge to edge screen interface. Now again, we are technically mirroring the iPhone itself. So if the second that you leave the application, it goes back to regular mirroring, but you do get a full screen on the actual display no matter what the size of the display is. So that's awesome to see. And again, right now it's very simple. You have a couple options. You have your bottom left option, which brings up your menu. You have your web, you have your docs, sheets and slides. And this relies on the Google kind of workspace situation. So if you click on one of these, it does bring you to sign into Google to be able to use your Google docs. You have your settings, your files, your lookup, your text edit, and your calculator. So I'm just gonna show you guys exactly what the UI is like. It isn't quite perfect just yet, but hopefully by the time this app is actually available, it will be good to go. So again, I am connected via Bluetooth keyboard. So if I go in here and type in YouTube, it gives me a nice little internet, like it gives me a normal web browsing experience. Now, again, there is some pop-ups like, you know, like, like, hey, you should probably do the web only version or the mobile OS version just so we can get the actual playback to work well. So I'm gonna do that. And we're gonna go to switch to desktop and mobile. And you can see that it, it did switch and I can probably make this bigger. 
as you can see, so I can actually open this up and drag it around and move it around like I would any other window. You do have some nice tiling over here, which is built into the system. So if I press this full screen button, you can go into quad, thirds, halves, minimize, or maximize. So I'm going to show you guys this, what it looks like with another application open. Let's open up another web browser, see what that looks like. Let's go to nine to five Mac. And if I want to open these side by side, I can go half to the left and then go on this one, half to the right. And now I got two side by side windows, two web browsers that again, work with the scroll wheel. So I'm scrolling with the scroll wheel, go over here, scrolling with this scroll wheel. And when it comes to audio, if I play, let's say a video, it is going to default audio to whatever the external display has. So if you do not have speakers in your external display, you know, leave a comment down below. If you've heard this before with the iPad, it won't actually give you any audio. So my BenQ monitor does have speakers built in, but the only way to bypass this is to actually connect Bluetooth speakers or use your headphones. Otherwise you cannot actually default to the iPhone speakers, no matter how good they are, but you're able to click on this video and it's going to load up and it's going to work. So that's awesome to see. So again, this is very kind of watered down. Like imagine like a Chrome OS type of experience where everything is kind of very simple. Everything is very web-based. There aren't like applications that you can download. But if I keep going on here, you can see how the UI kind of just, it works, right? If I want to do, you know, the calculator, they have a built-in calculator, which is again, something that the iPad doesn't have. It works as intended. Go back down here. There is a files app. The idea is that the files app does work with your actual files app inside of the file system of your iPhone. So you're able to kind of view that stuff. I haven't fully been able to see it, at least in terms of downloads and in terms of what's on my actual iPhone, but you are supposed to be able to sync across both of those devices, which is great to see. So again, this is more of like a demo and, a, and like what is possible when it comes to the iPhone. USB-C allows us to power external displays and let's just use external displays as mirror displays right now. So yes, we are mirroring, but I can see a future where maybe you just plug in your iPhone and you get some sort of Samsung Dex like experience because I have heard that Apple's working on maybe bringing some sort of Chrome OS type of laptop. So why not just create a, a Chrome OS version of Mac OS on the iPhone that could just be plugged into an external display and use that way. And I'm sure Apple can sell a bunch of like laptop chassis or dumb laptops to be able to use your iPhone with. And then we'll have that dream of just being able to put your iPhone into the laptop itself and it just starts working. But this is the settings menu that you can see. You can scroll through some developer information, the, the version of each one. And again, this application was actually first released for the iPad. And then of course, when iOS 17 came out and then USB-C came to the iPhone 15s, it did work. And this does also work with your iPhone 15 and 15 plus. You don't only need a Pro Max, which is good to see because the iPhone 15 and 15 plus still have USB-C. There's a slower data transfer speed, but you'll still be able to extend your display and use an application like Infinite 2 XP. But as you can see, if I start to open these up, it, they do work. Like I said, you just have to actually sign into them and be able to use them. But everything works as intended, which I love to see. Keyboard works, mouse works, it's responsive. You can make things bigger, make them smaller, drag them around, go into the settings, refresh, switch, switch to mobile, you know, minimize them if you want. So they go down here and then open them back up. So again, all the basics and UI stuff is there. The user experience is there. For the most part, it isn't too choppy. I have kind of found it a little bit tough to maybe grab one of the corners and make it bigger. Sometimes it doesn't know if I want to move it or make it bigger, which I'm sure will be fixed by the time this releases to the public. But overall, again, I just think this is awesome to see using your iPhone to power an entire OS experience on an external display. The future is extremely bright. So that is pretty much going to do for this video, everybody. Like you saw, this is kind of like a proof of concept application, right? I remember in the early days of iPad OS 13 and 14, when Apple brought USB-C over to the iPad, there were applications kind of like this that would kind of help us out and try to get some real extended monitor support. And this is all before Stage Manager and the actual extended monitor support that we see today. So I think we're going to see some similar type of evolution with the iPhone moving forward because there are things like Samsung Dex out there which are very useful. And we aren't really asking for a full OS beyond the iPhone that can be used kind of like Mac OS. We want kind of maybe like a watered down Chrome version OS that Apple could give us. But this by Infinite X2P is a great kind of first step to show us exactly how it can be done. This is kind of like a web first interface. You can easily use it. You got floating windows. Yes, it isn't perfect, but again, it's still in test flight mode as of right now and should be releasing in mid to late October. And by then everything should be kind of buttoned up and tightened up. But overall, I think this is a great idea to keep moving this forward. And I can definitely see Apple maybe adopting some sort of version of this in iOS 18, 19 and 20, something along those lines where Apple gives us kind of like a netbook type OS or like a watered down version of Mac OS that can be powered directly from an iPhone, especially because these iPhones from a pure power perspective are already kind of reaching that M1 level of power and performance. So 
why not slap kind of like a watered down OS that we can use to get some floating windows, to get Safari open, to get Google Docs open and things like that. But let me know in the comment down below, is this something that you would use? Would you pay $99 a month, $10 a year or $15 for the lifetime kind of subscription for this thing? Is that something that's worth it for you? Do you see yourself maybe using your iPhone as a computer if it is possible at the end of the day? Let me know in the comment down below. I'm very curious to see if maybe the iPhone can be your one-stop shop solution for everything. It can be your camera, it can be your phone, it can be your music player, it can be your computer now. So sky's the limit for the iPhone, everybody. Maybe we're in a world where we don't need a MacBook, an iPhone, and an iPad anymore. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. Thank you to Infinite X2P for letting me kind of test this out in test flight. And like I said, definitely follow me on Twitter and I'll let you guys know when it actually fully releases in the App Store. But that's going to do it. If you guys want to watch some more Mac OS, iOS, or iPad OS videos, click on one of these right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace.